Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be showing you how to create a red planet base for your miniatures. So perfect for any Martian environment, which would be great for Adeptus Mechanicus for Warhammer 40,000, John Carter of Mars, or even Battle Droids on Geonosis. It's really easy to do and it looks great. We really hope you enjoy this video and we'll see you at the desk. To make a Martian base, the first thing that you need to do is have a think about different textures on the base, because without doing this, what we'll get is a very flat and very barren appearance, which might look great for a photograph of Mars, but for a base of a miniature, it looks a little bit boring. So what we're gonna do is use some rocks and some cork to do just that. Now I have some just here, I've got some cork, and this is actually Battlefield Rocks from the Army Painter. So it's a tub full of this kind of stuff, lots of little bits of cork, which are perfect for what we need. I've also picked out two pieces of slate as well, which are good ones because they're relatively flat on top, which will come into play later on as well. Now to glue them to your base, all you need to do is use a little bit of super glue, and I have my base just here. All you've got to do is put on some glue and then just attach them as you like. Remember to keep it random and natural, but also bear in mind the miniature, because if you're going to be putting a miniature on here, you need to make sure it fits in either around the rocks, or it could even be standing on top of the rocks. It's really up to you. Now I'm not going to have a miniature on there, just so you can clearly see what I'm doing, but uh, what you'd need to do is glue them on like this, then build your miniature, and then, well, paint your miniature. So what you need to do is go through the whole stage of undercoating and painting it however you like. Because I'm not doing a miniature, I'm just going to go and undercoat this once I'm happy by putting some bits and pieces on here like this. And I'm going to go for Mechanica Standard Grey, which is a nice standard colour I like to use, but the method we're going to be using can work with any colour you like. So I'm going to finish this now, go and undercoat it, and when we come back we'll add a little bit more texture onto the base. And there we are, the base is undercoated, and it would be at this stage that you'd paint your miniature. And when you're then ready to finish off the base, it's time to come back to it and start out by filling in all those blank areas we've got in between all the slate with a bit more texture. Now for this, I'm going to be using some sand, and to apply it, what you need is some PVA glue. I've got some just here. All you've got to do is just get a dollop of this onto a palette, and then use an older brush to apply it. And I've got an old regiment brush from the Army Painter here. And because it's water-based, you can thin it down with water if you need to get into some more little nooks and crannies and things on it. But all you've got to do is just load up some of this on your brush and just start applying it to the base. And we're not looking to actually paint everything in these open patches. Instead, what we need to do is leave some blank areas because we're going to add another texture shortly as well. So what I'm going to do is start painting on like this, purposely leaving some areas open, such as just around there, for example. Also be sure to get plenty of glue around and underneath the rocks so we can fill that in with some of the sand as well. And there we are, the PVA glue is applied and you can see I've got those blank patches as well, but don't worry about those because we are going to come back to those later. Because the next thing we need to do is to put some sand onto the base now, and for that I've got my little tub of sand, it's just here. And all you've got to do is to get the base into the sand and, well, make sure it's covered. So, let's get plenty on there, really move it around to make sure it's totally over the top of it. It can be a little bit fiddly, but there we go. And once done that, it's just a matter of tapping off the excess and then making sure it's neat around the outside edge. So to do that, all you've got to do is just run your finger around it like that, getting rid of any excess bits such as there, and then give it around about half an hour to dry. Once that glue is dry and the sand's fixed down, we're then ready to move on to adding some colour onto this base. And to start out with, what we need is a really dark but also warm reddish brown. And you'll notice that we're going to be using a lot of reddish browns now, so everything ties together nicely and gets that Martian feel. And this is going to be applied over the rocks, but also those patches in the ground, because in those patches later we're going to use some crackle paint, so this colour is going to show through, so it's important that we do it now. So Doomball Brown is the colour to use, and to apply it I'm going to be using that regiment brush that I had earlier, because with this we can be quite rough as we apply it. As ever, just get some of this paint into your palette and make sure it's thinned down. And once you've done so, all you've got to do is start applying this over these areas. So we're looking at painting this onto all of the rocks like this, and also the patches in the ground such as around here. I finished applying Doomball Brown, and you can see at this stage the base does look a little bit weird, but don't worry because now what we're going to do is to start to bring all these colours together on the base and all the texture too, and the first stage for that is to apply some Martian Iron Earth to it, which will form the main mid-tone for the base. And this is one of Citadel's crackle paints, so we're going to be using it for some texture as well. Now whilst I'm applying this, I've also got some sand on hand which I'm going to be putting into the mix as well, you'll see how in just a moment. But to apply it to begin with, what you need to do is to get a medium to large brush, so I have that old regiment brush once again, and what you do is just start out with a good scoop of this without even thinning it down, and this is to be applied onto these flat areas, so here for example. So all you do is just put it thickly on like this, and the thicker it is, the bigger the cracks you're going to get. 
Now, as you put it on, what we need to do is to blend it into the surrounding area. So just bring it onto those surrounding parts here, such as like this, and then get some water on your brush and just use that to start to soak the color into the sand like that to bring it around the surrounding area. So this way you can see the textures are going to blend together. Now also it's a good idea to apply some of this onto these flat areas on the slate as well to get some of this texture appearing onto these areas. And you just apply it on there like that fairly thinly and then just get your brush wet and just use it to start stippling around the outside, just feathering it like this to help blend it into that surrounding area. Now when you put some of this on, what we need to do is to get a little bit more of the sort of grainy texture onto these flat areas too. So for that, that's what I've got the sand on hand for. All you do is just get a few granules and just gently sprinkle it on like that and the paint will just cement that in there like that. Give the crackle paint plenty of time to dry and when it is dry you can see now I've got a nice variety of textures on that base and they merge together really nicely too. I mean the crackling's even happening over some of the sand but it's all just blending together really nicely looking really realistic too. And what we need to do now is apply some shading to it to help define this detail a little bit more but we don't want to darken it down too much or take away from the red too much so the perfect colour to use here is a flesh wash so I'm going to use some Reichland flesh shade. Now to apply it all you need to do is to get a larger brush. I have a monster brush here from the Army Painter. Just load up with a good amount of this, you don't need to worry about using a palette here. Instead just get a good amount and just start applying it all over the texture of the base so it soaks in amongst all of it here like this. Once the wash is dry we're then going to move on to give a little bit more definition to the rocks by adding some darker shade to those and for these what we need is a dark brown. So I'm going to use some Agrax Hair shade for this. And to apply it again I'm going to be using my regiment brush from the Army Painter and this time what I want to do is make sure it's not too strong straight out of the pot because it's quite a dark colour this. So I'm going to add a touch of water to it on the palette just to thin it down like that. And then using this what we need to do is paint it around the rocks to give them a bit more definition from the surrounding area. So for example areas such as just along here, darkening it down a little bit there like that. Now to avoid getting too solid a line between where this wash is and where it isn't, which you can see happening just there, just quickly wash your brush to make sure it's got just a little bit of water on there. Just paint it along the edge like that to help blend those areas in. Now that wash is dry as well, you can see we've got much more definition around the rocks and with that done what we need to do now is to start to highlight it and bring back some of that slightly dusty texture which is perfect for Mars. And to do this first of all we need to dry brush it using some tusk or fur. Now to apply it you can go for any size dry brush you want to, I'm just using one of the smaller ones here from the Army Painter. And all you've got to do is get a little bit of this on your brush and get some tissue and use it to work it into the bristles and get rid of the excess as well. And just move it along your tissue, just seeing what sort of texture you're picking out with the colour. When you're getting that kind of effect you know you've got the right amount on there. And all you've got to do is just start applying this roughly across the texture of your base, across the whole thing including the rocks, just gently going back and forth like this to pick out all that texture and the raised areas. With that dry brushing done we're now ready to move on to a second dry brush to really finish this off. And for this what we need to do is use a colour that's going to get the kind of dusty feel to it. So what we need is sort of like a greyish cream kind of colour, something sympathetic to what we used previously. Carrick stone is a great choice for this and to apply it we just need to dry brush it on again. So I'm going to use the same brush I used in the previous step, so a small amount on the bristles and again on your tissue just use it to work it into the brush and get rid of the excess. And this time we want to be a little bit lighter than we were in the previous step so on the tissue just check to make sure there's a very small amount left on there. And once you've done so all you've got to do is once again start lightly bringing this back and forth across all of this texture to really finish it off and tie it all together. Now once you've done this all you've got to do is to paint the rim of the base and this can be any colour you like but I'm going to go for an off black. I think Corvus black will look really nice with this. And with the rim of the base now painted the Martian base is complete. Now if you wanted to you could just leave it here but if you want to emphasise the dusty nature of the base what you can do is do an atmospheric weathering effect on your miniatures to give that impression of dust being kicked up around their feet. Now if you want to do this what you need to do is fully do the base around the miniature as we've been showing you but what you should then do is return to those two dry brush colours. So first of all Tusk or Fur and then Carrick Stone. Now the miniature I've got ready for the example is a battle droid from Star Wars Legion and we're going to do that on his legs just now. So to do it what you need to do is go again from those small dry brushes. So I've got a hobby dry brush here from the Army Painter and a fairly new one as well and you can see the, the point is quite sharp on it. And with this what you've got to do is just get a small amount of the paint ready just as we were doing previously and you this time really make sure you get rid of most of that paint because with an effect like this it's very important you only slowly add it until you're happy. It's very difficult to take this away but it's easy to add more if you want to. So you just need to make sure you've got rid of almost all of it on the tissue there like that and once you've done so on your miniature what you're looking to do is to start applying it 
towards the run where the feet are. So we're looking kind of like around this area here, just going past the calf just there. So we want to go to around about that point like that. And all you do, just start stippling it on like that, slowly building up the colour so you can see it gets stronger towards the bottom and then just fading it away as you get to around about there. Once you've finished building up the tusk or fur, you're then ready to move on to Carrick Stone, and this is to be applied in a much more normal way for dry brushing. So very lightly back and forth across this area, which you can see just takes the edge off that red and just helps blend it in with the surrounding area. Now, of course, the droid is a very similar colour to Carrick Stone anyway. What this does is just takes that edge off the red, makes it not quite so strong, so no matter what colour's above it, it'll just fade the two areas together. Slowly build it up until you're happy, and once you've done so, the effect is complete. So as you've seen, doing this kind of base is really straightforward, but the key thing to remember is about the textures. Make sure they blend together so that you get a natural finish, rather than putting just one on top of the other, because if you do so, it'll look a little bit strange and, well, not very natural. So remember, just make sure you blend them together and you'll get a great looking result. Anyway, we really hope you enjoyed this video, have fun painting your miniatures, and we'll see you all again very soon.